Dinner for shoes, please. Hello, and welcome to an episode of Dinner for Shoes. We have so much going on in this episode. I am overwhelmed. Like, look at all the shit on the table in front of me. Okay, first of all, today's episode is called Robungi and Holiday Jewelry because we are talking about some of the jewelry gifts that I recommend giving for the holidays if you know that a loved one wants jewelry. And in order to like kind of curate this list and get a little bit of a background and feel for what's trending in the jewelry world, we talked to Dana Rebecca um, of Dana Rebecca Designs today, and she is our special guest for the episode. Therefore, I of course am trying her favorite food, which is none other than sushi. We've had a few sushi lovers in a row here, not in a, in a straight line, but like recently, which doesn't bother me because I love sushi. Sushi is probably my favorite food as well. But Dana was specific in that her favorite roll is a salmon and avocado roll. Okay, great. I love sab salmon and avocado rolls and I've never tried Robangi before. They are a sushi place in Hoboken and one of their best sellers and most orders just happens to be the salmon avocado roll. So I got that today. We're going to try that at the end of the episode and we're going to start with all of the good stuff, all of the jewelry and a drink, which will also be part of my dinner um, from Soberish. So first, let me get to the outfit behind the shoes. Um, today, I decided to wear my Reformation mules because we are talking about jewelry and obviously these red satin mules from Reformation have it going on with the whole bling thing. They're very old. I literally think I got these shoes when Reformation first launched shoes years ago and I was obsessed with them. It was the holiday season. I was like, these red satin mules will be perfect for the holiday season. I've thought about parting with them as I've collected more red shoes in my wardrobe and I just haven't been able to because I feel like they're so holiday festive. They make any literal like spring dress look more holiday-esque, more winter-esque. So I love them and I think they speak to the jewelry theme today. My dress is by Sophia Saratelli. I sourced it from Wolf and Badger. I am wearing, even though it might look like all one piece to some, a bustier from Pepper Mayo. It's striped, I'm wearing it backwards, um, just to add a little bit of dimension and cool prints to this look and this moment. And on top of that, I am wearing my Jenny Bird hoops. The reason being, spoiler, they are one of my top recommendations for gifts this holiday season. I They still have them stocked on the site. I've had them for years. They are probably my most worn hoop. If you have a family, friend, or loved one who you're thinking about getting a jewelry gift for and you know they love hoops, Jenny Bird is my top recommendation. So we're going to talk about them a little bit more along with some of the jewelry I have displayed over here because those two pieces are some of my recommendations and we're gonna get into it. Um, and I have my chopsticks that are ready for the salmon avocado roll when it gets here. Now, one thing that I do wanna do is make my drink from Soberish because what you need to know about Soberish, Soberish is one of our ad sponsors for today's episode. Um, and we are going to make a cocktail that was crafted specifically for me by one of the founders, Kim, um, when I got this little cute package from Soberish, which includes drops for a buzz without the booze. That's what the drops say. These are mojito flavored, but in this velvet bag, there also is a flavorless because I guess if you wanna like put the drops in something that wouldn't taste good with a mojito tinge, you would use the flavorless one. And I like also that it came in this like chic velvet bag. Um, they also, Soberish also gave me this little stir to stir up my drink and a Moscow Mule cup because spoiler, they created kind of like a Moscow Mule situation for me that I'm going to make. Um, but really, cute. So it comes when you order from Soberish, like with this little cute QR code that kind of answers any question you have about what Soberish actually is, what's in these droplets, because there is no alcohol. That's what's so great about it. Each um, droplet has five milligrams of THC and 10 milligrams of CBD, and it's supposed to give you a wine-like buzz. Now, they also gave me, and it's literally so funny and so appropriate. They gave me a little bracelet that says, you got this, which is amazing. Um, you know, they, okay, so basically the Soberish team 
Um, Kimmy G is the founder, and she says that her favorite way to enjoy the soberish drops are to add them into a mix of ginger beer and cranberry juice, which is what I'm going to do because I do love a mule. I love a Mexican mule particularly, but we're doing sans alcohol today. And we are going to see, since I did some research, and according to soberish, I have my jewelry, according to soberish, um, it should take about, here, kick play, about 10 minutes for the buzz, the the but the wine buzz without alcohol to kick in. So I am going to make the drink and we're going to see if it kicks in by the end of the episode. I think now would probably be a good time to do it. I forgot the ginger beer and the cranberry juice. So you enjoyed this quick 30 second break from our ad sponsor, Soberish, while I go get it. A mistletoe mule, a save for later mm. holiday recipe. So good. This recipe is perfect for the holidays and is simple enough that everyone can enjoy a cocktail at the party. Today I'm making a soberish version. I was thinking about using our mojito shot, but decided to stick with the mint syrup and one serving of my soberish drops for a wine like buzz in five to 10 minutes. You know what's great about this drink is that because you can use your soberish drops, you can put them in your purse, and this is a perfect drink that you can order on the go or on an airplane. Typically airplanes have ginger beer and cranberry juice, so thank me later. Now, if you want an alcoholic version, just swap out the drops for your favorite gin. There you have it. We got the cranberry juice. We got the fever tree ginger beer, and you just saw how Kim herself makes this cocktail. So we're gonna see if I can do it quite as good as Kim, and I'm sure that I won't, but I am so curious if I'm gonna feel this buzz. So first of all, let's start with the little drop. This is the way I open shit in this house. She, Trisha, Kit looks so concerned right now that I'm doing this. Oh my God, relax, bud. Relax, okay. Oh, oh, I get it. Okay, so this doesn't have the droplet, but this does. So what we wanna do actually is, I think I'm gonna use the mojito. Can't wait for sushi. When I have this little buzz. Okay, so this droplet is what we're gonna use to take the mojito flavor. I guess I could do the flavor that is <laughs> not with, okay, this, is, this one already has some drops in. We don't wanna, okay. You don't wanna have this, I'm telling you. You would be off the wall. I never know if I'm like squeezing enough juice, you know, when I'm doing this. Okay. All right, that definitely looks like a droplet. Full droplet in. Oh, and this is cool. So you can like put it on this one. So now you know, like I had this one open. Sick. I'm gonna use this all the time. And you can like, tr oh, Jesus. I love this company. Honey, this is not your type of buzz that you want. Now I'm gonna do the cranberry juice and the ginger beer. I think I'm gonna do cranberry juice first. See how I'm a mixologist, people? All right, I do love a mule cup. I really do. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of cranberry. We're gonna do the ginger beer. I knew I was gonna have to open this, so I took Nick's like, like Nick would have a skull bottle opener. He just would, he just would. <laughs> I love ginger beer. A little taste of it on its own, what a kick. Okay, gonna pour that in. And I wanna try to finish my drink before you, before you guys leave me so you can see if I actually get a little tipsy. Even though I feel like I always seem like I'm tipsy, so like, who the fuck knows, you know? All right, so now we got the drops, we got the cranberry juice, we got the ginger beer. We made the drink exactly like Kim made it. Oh, that tastes good. Oh my God, this is really good. And it's also gonna taste so good with sushi. Like when I tasted that, I had like the, like the idea in the back of my mind that I'm about to eat a salmon avocado roll and it just tasted great together. Like ginger beer and sushi, Interesting combination. I don't know if you've tried it, but in my mind, it's seeming good. I'll let you know if it is. All right, Kit, if you can't stop. you I don't know if it's recording, honey, because you keep doing this on the computer and then I don't know, it's tracking. Okay. Whew! So we made the drink. I think I'm buzzed already. Um, trying to chug, but no. So it should kick in in 10 minutes. Okay. The only thing that we haven't done yet well, actually, we haven't done many things yet. Um, okay, what I want to do now is have this drink while you listen to my interview with Dana and learn all about the different jewelry trends that 
are highly recommended as gifts for the 2024 holidays into 2025. Um, Dana has some really great ideas. I would say like the overarching thing that I learned from her is that she recommends keeping it classic when it comes to jewelry for the holidays. I do too, but when I tell you about my jewelry recommendations for the holidays after you listen to the interview, you might find that I have a little bit more of an eccentric taste and I'm trying to kind of like stick to my guns with what I really love and want to be gifted, but go ahead and listen to my interview with Dana and she'll tell you where it's at when it comes to holiday jewelry trends. And she'll talk about some holiday jewelry trends that brides should probably tap into. If you didn't know, Dana Rebecca also has Dana Rebecca Bridal, a whole different section of her, her company. So she will fill you in on all of those trends. I am a third generation jewelry designer, which is really amazing. My grandfather and my father are both in the jewelry industry. Um, I've always been a creative person. Honestly, I always say you never wanted me to come to your house for a play date like the moms. Now that I'm a mom, I can really, truly wholeheartedly say that. I always wanted to do a craft project. I wanted to figure out how things were made. And from a very early age, I had a job. I worked in a toy store, then I worked in a clothing store. And I was always just very curious about business and like what it would be like to sell a product. So I started making jewelry, beaded jewelry, just fun pieces for my family and friends. The joke became that I was just doing it for fun, but my mom's friends would never know how to tell someone whose jewelry it was. So they would be like, it's, it's a Dana. So the name stuck. And that was my very first collection. When I um, turned 16, I started creating jewelry. Um, I went overseas to India with my dad and totally butted in on a conversation about jewelry design. And the next thing I know, I'm thrown in to like all of these amazing jewelry designers and manufacturers and people who are going to help bring my ideas to life. Um, I came back to Chicago and I did charity golf outings. I had family friends who were running these events. So we'd love to have you have a table. 48 hours later, I sold out my very first like true collection. Um, I went to the University of Texas in Austin. I wanted to be a lawyer. I was like, forget jewelry. That's a family thing. But with a little bit of encouragement from family members to just go down the path, I decided to go to the Gemological Institute of America in Carlsbad, California. I studied in their design course and like a lunatic, launched Dana Rebecca Design six months out of design school in college. And, you know, to that question of like, is it what I thought it would be? I didn't dream this big, to be totally honest. But I think what's really fascinating, Dana Rebecca is 17 years old. What I never really thought was possible was that like something I was just passionate about as a hobby could turn into my passion and career and be something that I do every day. I happen to be sitting in our gorgeous Chicago showroom. I'm up in the sky so I can show you the pretty skyline. Oh my God, so pretty. Chicago. Looks like a I'm nice day. <laughs> It's a beautiful, like, Chicago day. So we remind ourselves all winter long why we love Chicago, but th a day like this makes us feel good. Uh -huh. But I'm surrounded right now by beautiful jewelry. I love what I do. Um, it's a lot harder than I ever thought it would be. Starting your own business is incredibly challenging. Um, but I think for me, 17 years in, I really, really try to find, like, the bright spots, the things that I love. But it's definitely not been a straight line. There are years that I'm like, yippee, skippy. And then there are tough years. But certainly from the beginning to now, it's nothing like I ever imagined it would be. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so glad that you obviously followed your passion. And I feel like so many people don't realize that, like, yes, you can make your favorite hobby your career. Um, so that's it's intimidating. It's very intimidating to feel that, like, you know, everyone says, like, jump in a net will catch you. I don't always believe that that's the case. Yeah. You got to make sure that there are some things in place for that. It's not as easy as that. Um, we still have to pay bills, but there are certainly ways to grow a business really smart and steady. And that's really what I did with Dana Rebecca. 
Yeah. And so 17 years is a long time. And you have seen so many other types of jewelry companies, types of jewelry companies that are kind of like yours, like come and go. So how have you just continued to make Dana Rebecca like stand out on the market throughout the years? So I'm really lucky that my family's background is in manufacturing. So because of that, quality and craftsmanship are at the top. When people touch and feel Dana Rebecca, they're like, aha, now I understand. So we always say it's it's really nice to get to show people the collection in person because they get to see the quality. And then I would say our price point. We're really, really, really price conscious. And we want you to be able to purchase jewelry multiple times a year or, you know, that great big piece. The jewelry industry is super competitive, but there is such a vast amount of price points, demographics, qualities. So we have really stayed the course exactly where we want to be, which is in great price jewelry that will withstand the test of time. The other thing that I will say is we encourage self-purchasing. While jewelry is a massively gifted item, we are encouraging women to celebrate themselves, to not wait for that occasion or for that gift. Now, the holiday season is obviously coming, so that is a whole other part of our business, but we see women celebrating their own milestones with jewelry. My mom and her friends were not doing that. They were waiting for jewelry to be gifted to them. And our Dana Rebecca customer loves the way jewelry makes them feel special because it has meaning. I love being able to open up your jewelry box and be like, this is a work career milestone. This was, you know, something that I bought myself for this milestone that I hit personally. I think it's about celebrating and we just love to make women feel special. So we champion other women. We're always talking about women. So while it is very noisy in the industry, we do some things that really make us stand out, but also we are the most consistent. We don't touch trends. We don't stray from the core of our business, which is classic, timeless, fine jewelry, again, at a great price point. Yeah. I think you made a really good point, too, just about how, like, these days it is, and since I've been in the industry, which is, like, 11, 12 years, but just watching how jewelry has become this, like, traditional gift that you get from someone to this personality-infused piece that, like, you buy yourself to show who you are. And I love that. And I like that you guys stay classy too. And, you know, you don't necessarily speak to the trends. If you fall into that like bucket, you run the risk of them like not being able to get back to your brand DNA, you know? And at the end of the day, like, I don't believe that someone needs to be head to toe Dana Rebecca. We all have pieces, whether they're valuable or not. So when I say like heirloom or vintage or pass down pieces, I certainly am not thinking price wise. I'm thinking sentimental. They came from somebody um, that's important to you. I'm expecting that to be part of your everyday. I'm expecting trend. I'm expecting plated. So I love the idea, like you said, that jewelry tells a story, right? Like your wardrobe can be you know, really wacky and crazy and eclectic, or it can be so cool and classic, but your jewelry can really change everybody's perception. You could wear the same white t-shirt and jeans, but your jewelry speaks to you because it's that that turn of personality, Mm -hmm. whether it comes from colored stones, again, those vintage heirloom pieces, personalization, like there's so much. And I love that jewelry tells a story. I think it's not given enough credit to tell a story. Definitely. Um, So, but another story and kind of like what this episode is focusing on is holiday and what trends you might see your shoppers, even if it is like a woman purchasing something for herself around the time of the holidays. So tell us kind of like what trends you're used to seeing. And maybe if in recent years you've started to see like the, like a pickup of a different trend around the holiday time. You know, I think it's really interesting. I actually pulled out some jewels to kind of show, but I was thinking a lot about like the art of the stack. Tennis necklaces have been trending and they will continue to trend. Mm. In my opinion, they have always been popular. We've really just leaned into different versions of them and at sharp price points. So this tennis necklace 
is our best seller. It's under 4,000. Like there are not tennis necklaces in that price point. So it is a great piece. What I think people do at giftable times is really think through like that anchor piece. We've been talking a lot about it at Dana Rebecca that while I absolutely love this, I want you to know that each piece needs to stand out on its own, Mm -hmm. right? Like it's like, I compare it to high rise jeans, you know, when you buy them in the store and then you pair them with that like perfect top that hits them just right. And then you get home and you're like, I don't have anything that goes with it. Right. Like you can't do that with jewelry. You have to make sure that each individual piece looks good alone. So I think we're actually seeing that this holiday season that people are buying that necklace to rock by itself. And they're really conscious about the fact that they want it to have an impact because they are wearing it alone. Gone are the days that jewelry is just a complete, you know, neck mess. I think it's fun. I do it too. But I'm really seeing that a lot of people are like, I just want one necklace that I don't have to think about. Mm -hmm. That is the standout piece. Over the holidays, we see a lot, and I mean a lot of diamond stud sales. We're talking the most classic four prong or a martini setting but we also see people lean into studs that just have a little bit more interest in them. Mm -hmm. And so this is really like a huge item for us during the holiday season. I think it's also like, if you have pierced ears, nobody's upset about a pair of studs, you know, you've got a little bit more nuance when you get into bracelets and rings, just because those are tougher gifts. But keep in mind, we're all about building a wish list. We're all about sending that hint we take such detailed notes that sometimes our, our clients are like, how did you know a color? How did you know her size? And we're like, <laughs> oh, like that, right? So I think a lot of people are leaning into just those very classic items, especially when you get them as a gift. It's so nice to have something that we're like, this is a win no matter what. We don't often know what your jewelry box looks like. So we do lean into classic tennis bracelets or something that's a little bit more, you know, stackable. We talk a lot about one of our cuffs that I'm obsessed with. It's our flexi cuff. Love that. It's got an amazing um, flexible system on the inside. Mm -hmm. It looks so good with an Apple watch. Yeah. It's so silly. Yeah. But so many people are like, oh, I hate it. And I'm like, well, I have the best bracelet for you. So I think a lot of it is like finding that classic piece that does, like I said, go with whatever you already have. And again, at this time of year, we see a lot of people self-purchase for themselves and then just put it under the tree and say, you got me. Right. Right. Absolutely. And then what about like Dana Rebecca Bridal? Do you see any trends during the holidays when it comes to engagement rings or just bridal jewelry in general? Yeah, it's a very big engagement season. I would also say so is the beginning of the year because people want to have a little bit more of like intimate engagement versus like crazy family time but we also start to see like the pressure build post thanksgiving and it's like if i handle one more holiday where people are asking me when we're getting engaged so we start to hear a little bit of an uptick uh post thanksgiving in order to hit a christmas um or new year's engagement we have a ton of in stock rings What's really like very interesting about our in-stock rings is that oftentimes it's just like the baseline for conversation of price point. We don't often like perfectly nail it. For example, we might have this solitaire and they might say, oh, I love a hidden halo in that. This doesn't have a hidden halo. Easy to add, but we would make a new ring. But we do have a really nice assortment. Now, I do think rings are getting a little bit more unique when it comes to stacking. So a lot of times people are saying, I want that clean classic ring because I'm going to stack it with three or four bands or something bigger. So I tend to lean in and saying that this should be your most classic item. We're seeing a lot of engraving on the inside, Mm. a lot of like special little notes or details, or even just like a diamond on the inside of the band. A little secret between me and you. But we're also seeing so many people do just like classic eternity bands for wedding rings. Mm -hmm. So mix shapes, a lot of ovals, emeralds, you know, round reigns reigns supreme because of the sparkle. Nothing sparkles 
like around brilliant diamonds. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like you can't go wrong with classic, especially like if someone were to ask you, oh my God, I want to get an engagement ring this time of year. What are some of like your tips? I feel like classic is key. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. And you know what? A lot of times we see like, maybe she didn't have like any inspo or she didn't sort of share. We'll say, listen, let's go with the solitaire. It's the easiest thing. Your investment lives in your diamond. So let's go with a great center stone that you know she's going to love and want. Usually we know exactly, or he knows, or, you know, the partner knows exactly the shape. We don't really ever have a situation where it's the wrong shape, but oftentimes we're like, I'd love to add side stones, or I really want this to be yellow gold. That's the easiest thing to do, honestly. And so when you are a little bit like, eh, don't know the answer. I always think that a solitaire is the best, but I also think it's the best for playing with and adding on. Sometimes those bigger, thicker bands are only as fun as what you could stack with it. I think that really, really, really uber thin is kind of on its way out. I think people want a little bit more substantial, chunky. Um, We hear a lot about very thin rings and we won't do them because they break Mm -hmm, mm, and you know so I think that it's about finding something that you will love and again get to pair it with an heirloom or a piece from somebody else that's the fun of jewelry is just getting to mix and match I'd say over the holidays we do have a lot of like custom bracelets for example I pulled out one that we've done actually a couple holidays in a row where we've done oh, I multiple shapes. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So like we've done it in all emeralds, all hearts. You know, we can kind of go anywhere. So I think a lot of our like bridal collection is meant for you to just be inspired to then say, I, I want to do it this way, or I want to take it to the next level, or I love a, a tennis bracelet, but I want it more of a hard cuff. So there is some play. We definitely see a lot of like name things or kid inspired bracelets we've recently been doing a lot of um taking out like one or two diamonds then just doing your kids birthstones Mm -hmm. right it's so subtle it's so easy people don't not a lot of our clients have ever said like just put a blue sapphire here they love it in the bracelet and so i think that there's so much opportunity when it comes to custom we just always want to make sure that we have a great base for you but really the sky is the limit And how does it work with custom? So like, let's say I know that like there's a button on your website, but what's kind of like the process if someone did want to do something custom for the holidays and like make moves? So we have three showrooms that you can make an appointment with uh, a specialist in person. I would say a vast majority of our custom product projects are actually just virtual. We'll get in a zoom with you. We'll talk through you, what you like. We'll look at your Pinterest. We'll look at your photos and then help you come up with a game plan. Um, a lot of times it's really dictated by the client. Right. And a lot of times they'll say, well, okay, well, we want the Dana Rebecca touch on it. But we're like, we got to get out of you what you're really hoping for it to be. Yeah. Because people will say like, you know, I really would love to do a pair of sapphire earrings. And we need to get like, what does that mean to you before we get into the design process? But from there, we do drawings, we'll do a computer design. So we take you along the steps. And then once the product um, and decisions have been made, we kind of hit the ground running. Sometimes we'll have an actual like wax piece to show you. Oh, cool. But I always am like, sometimes hesitant because even from a computer design to a wax piece, thinking about like the prongs in this ring, they're bent over, Mm -hmm. but I have to build them to be tall. So people are always like, the prongs are too tall, you know? So we are, we make sure that we understand what you want to see through the process and have a conversation because sometimes it can be confusing. And then people are so nervous to see the final product because they saw a scary computer like design that's very like rigid. So we like to sort of show you what we have and what the prongs would look like. There's ball prongs, there's claw prongs there's a lot of things but we'll show you in the process other pieces that have been made so a lot of our clients don't realize how visual they end up becoming um but it's actually really fun our team is amazing and they love getting to 
work with people to create just like that awesome piece that excites them. I think people love that added touch, even if it's something that's, you know, is this like this? And they get to select that diamond from a dozen. Yeah. It feels like a little bit more custom than grabbing a ring. That said, there's always rings available to take. But again, we might be $2,000 over your budget or $2,000 under your budget, which is why there's always room in the middle for other diamonds or to change things up. Yeah. And I think it's so incredible what you can do online these days, especially for someone who's buying something as a gift and like may not be able to come into a showroom slash their giftee doesn't know about the gift. Yeah. So we have an amazing virtual try on feature on our website that literally blows my mind even when I use it. So you could see it on a model. She can move around. You can change her skin tone. You can like really see it, but then you can take it to your iPhone and literally just put your hand down and try on the ring try on the stacks. And honestly, it's so helpful because our fingers and our hands all look different, right? And like a size six finger varies, right? Long and lean, chubbier. It's nice to have it be on your own hands. You put it down. Same thing with the next stack. Pop on your phone, do like this. And you get to see it. It's such a helpful thing to do because it really does visualize it on you. Plus, I always say, wear what you have. It doesn't always perfectly like layer. Like if you already have Mm. a tennis necklace, the way the tennis necklace is sitting on your arm and if you're using virtual might not be perfect, but it's pretty good to be able to see what that looks like. But we also try to pop up around the country like frequently. So we do a lot of pop-ins in different cities and we hope you'll come to build a wish list. That's really one of the most important things to us. We never want you to feel because we are appointment based, we do have a lot of open like showroom hours. We never want you to feel like you have to make a purchase when you come in here. So there's wish list appointments, there's browsing appointments. It's no pressure. Like I said at the beginning, I want you to touch and feel it because I know you're going to see the quality and the difference. And so it is about trying to meet our clients where they are. Obviously we're not in every city and we can't be, but we have amazing retailers around the country as well. We have a great assortment of Dan and Rebecca. And so I think even just taking a virtual appointment with our team to get to know us and then seeing, Oh, when are we in your city or where are we closest is always really helpful. But a lot of what we do is virtual. And sometimes it's just, that first piece that you buy that you're like, I got it. I understand the quality. We have a great return policy if you don't love the piece, but it's nice to be able to get to touch and feel jewelry, but also trusting the people that you're talking to. It's so important. The jewelry industry with bad rep, you know, like it's, there's, it's such a unknown. You're buying something that has, education behind it. And so I love that on our website, you can get educated on the four C's on the jewelry terms. We actually really love when you come in and you're like, explain it to me again. Let's go through it. Right. People get very caught up in the color of a diamond. And then we're like, okay, well, let's show you three diamonds in three different colors. And they're like, which one's which I'm like, so that's the point. If you don't know which one's which and you're not using, no one's really using magnification when they're showing their ring, we want to save you money. So with all diamonds and all custom in general, we have ranges. We're not selling L, M, N diamonds. We stick in a certain color and clarity classification per shape, but we talk about that. We've had clients who've walked in the door and been like, saw this diamond, da, 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 with these specs. And we're like, that's a great price. You should get it. Mm. We're not trying to compete. We've always led with a very honest approach. I think it has lent itself to our clients continuing to come back. I tell clients all the time, you don't need another piece of jewelry. You don't need another ring. But I want you to never put away a piece of jewelry because you buy something new. So we've always led with a very honest approach. I kind of joke. I might have a better, more successful business if I wasn't so honest, but I really want you to look at your jewelry and not have regrets. Yeah. Well, honesty is like the path always. And my sales team is 
very much like that too. I always say like when you're buying yourself a gift, think about what, or you're celebrating a milestone. I personally love the idea of buying a ring or a bracelet for a milestone because it's what I see on myself. I want to be able to look down and be like, I am a fucking like badass. I'm a great mom of this. I bought this present for myself. I am reminded by my stack. Earrings and necklaces are a little bit harder. I obviously am sitting on a podcast staring at myself. (laughs) So I'm seeing my earrings and my necklace. And I do talk on Instagram to myself as well. But you're not typically doing that and getting to be like, oh, I love when I put that on. It just makes me feel like connected to that moment. And so I think a lot of, we talk through your purchase with you, which isn't typical in the jewelry industry. It's really like the sale, move on. We've just had such a different approach. We want you to love your jewelry box, have no regrets, be excited about those milestones and also be excited to pass it down. Yeah. That's such a huge part of jewelry. Yeah. And that actually, you really tied into like what I was going to ask you last, which is I feel like when I talk to a lot of people, but like some of the most successful business people, they have like the commonality that they all kind of like look within to determine what they should put out there. So you were kind of talking about that where how like you love looking at bracelets and rings on your hand. Now, has there ever been anything that like you love personally jewelry wise that you've then like backed into the DNA of Dana Rebecca, you keep it consistent or just like an idea you have because you like something all of a sudden and you want to try to, you know, put it into your collection in some way. We, I am like the queen of like taking a sample and seeing if anyone's going to notice, like I could put a necklace on and be on Instagram. Like, what do you wear? What do you wear? What, what's a necklace? And then I get like 50 DMs. I'm all about like testing things out. Mm. I think one of the things that's most important to me at Dana Rebecca is the community that we have. We have literally the most loyal and loving Dana Rebecca fans and friends that I'm always like, let me test out if they're going to say anything about that bracelet. Or I don't know if like, I'm going to be able to understand that clasp. I love the idea. We're trying to push it forward, but like, is it going to cause too many problems? Mm -hmm. I'm the first person to say like, go out to the team, go out to the community. Like, let's get some, you know, insight. I don't know if I have like a concrete answer to that, but I'm definitely one who's like, let's put it on. Let's play with it. Let's see what it feels like. You know, we've dabbled into deciding maybe we'll try to do a little bit of men's jewelry because people are always asking. And then we go out and we put it out there. It's like crickets, you know, but I think that that's what's really fun about jewelry. Listen, I I'm obsessed with clothes and I love fashion, but I don't envy the idea that if you have a bad cut dress, there's nothing you could do with that fabric. It's kind of, it is what it is. Uh, jewelry is so different. We can yeah. melt it. We can repurpose it. We can try to change the piece. Um, but I'm a huge fan of going out to our community and being like, are you feeling what I'm feeling about this? And, or are we into toggle necklaces and just kind of pushing in and getting feedback? Um, but I can be swayed quickly also when my team is like oh my god we're obsessed with that and I'm like I don't love it but if all 12 of you in the Chicago office are obsessed with it I'm gonna lean into it Mm -hmm. I'm not a heart girl but I've leaned into certain heart things but I'm all about feedback so I'm very open and honest and sharing um I'm not really sure I kind of answered your question no you you totally did I mean (laughs) I feel like it just speaks volumes that you have a community online or even like you said in your own office that will give you that feedback and like it definitely does like I I asked about looking within but you make a great point about just asking like yeah. asking your devoted shoppers like do they like this would they wear it and you know if like men's jewelry isn't the Dana Rebecca thing because the community doesn't see like the want for it then you right. like kind of take that and you're like okay maybe that's like not my area and I should focus yeah. on this so it's funny like I've seen like articles be like geometric shapes are in and I'll be like god damn it we did shapes like three years ago yeah. and I'll be like <laughs> what's wrong with me? You know, and I'll be like, I just follow what I love. All of the pieces in this collection are named after family and friends and women that inspire me. 
two of the most popular collections are my children, which thankfully they are popular because the stress to design a collection named after Poppy and Lulu was enormous. But I do really think that I design for what I feel like is missing. Mm -hmm. I'm not designing to hit a trend or a look or anything. And so while jewelry has gotten bigger and neck stacks and chains and a lot of things have gotten bigger, we haven't ridden that wave Yeah, because that's just not who we are. And I don't want to ride the wave because once you go big and then things go back to dainty, you don't wear the big, but Mm -hmm. you'll always wear the dainty even with the big, if that makes sense. And so I've had some hard times with like, the way trends, I feel like either missed them or I was ahead of them, but not because I want to be trendy, but because I just feel like it would be nice to hit the mark every mm-hmm. once in a while with where the trends are going. Well, I love that. I think you've given such great advice, especially from someone who has been in the industry for so long. So I hope that like other people who want to, you know, break into the jewelry industry or just other people in the industry take, you know, inspiration from everything you said. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the interview with Dana. Um, She is just a wealth of knowledge. She's been in the jewelry industry for so long and it's seriously impressive how much she knows. Her recommendations are top notch, top of the line. I'm feeling good. I'm still working on drinking this. Kit is monitoring me because I'm sober-ish and I am going to talk about um, some of my favorite and my recommendations for jewelry gifts for the holidays. So let's start. I kind of went random. Um, I started with a piece from Dana Rebecca that I really love. I am saying that this is for the elevated minimalist above 500. Now this is one of the higher end jewelry items on the list. And it costs 660. I really love these. These are the Nana Bernice Not Huggies from Dana Rebecca. I really love them in gold because I'm a gold person. I love the little knot. I love the hoop. They make a pair of hoops somewhat different. And they also come in silver and rose gold. So I think that's a really unique gift. Um, it's, you know, luxury. Um, they are made from 14 karat gold. Um, they cost 660 no matter what metal color you choose. So that is definitely my first recommendation pair of earrings. And I did try to switch it up with all different types of jewelry pieces. Like we have anklets on this list, you know, we have earrings, we have bracelets. So no matter what it is that your loved one prefers to wear, there will be a jewelry gift for them. And like, honestly, with this whole list, I just wish someone would buy it all for me. Some of the stuff I have, and I'm recommending it because of that, because I really love it. But okay. I am talking next about Arms of Eve. Now, I said this is for the personalization lover under $50 with multiple piercings because it is really cool. This is the Arms of Eve Alphabet Gold Single Stud. This costs $29. Now, if someone likes to wear their full initials, maybe they're, they have a lot of piercings, they like to wear their first, middle, and last name in their ears, you can get them multiple pieces. But these are really sweet, really um, cute and delicate. And They come in every letter of the alphabet. So that would just be a great gift for someone who likes to kind of like decorate their ears and it's affordable. Um, For the Bohemian Gemstone Lover under 250, I recommended, it didn't really go with my outfit today, so I'm not wearing it, but I wear it all the time. This Civetta Los Angeles Blue Rainbow Opal Choker Necklace. This costs $249. It's a really beautiful choker. Um, I think I've had it for so long and just the fact that like it is still stocked on the site, I think says a lot. Um, Trish, I feel like you would actually look really good in this. Come on. Damn it. Um, but this, this blue opal choker necklace is made from 22 karat gold. It's a 16 inch adjustable chain. And it does say on the website, opals are known to give clarity and stability. So that's really beautiful. Um, when I look into these stones, I literally see like the ocean. So for ocean lovers, anyone who's like boho, I highly recommend opals. Um, I now just in the whole, you know, we talked to Dana about brides who might be shopping for their upcoming weddings during the holidays. And I said for the bride to be under a thousand dollars, if you have a bride who you are very close with, a loved one in your life, she's a bride to be, you might want to get her the ring concierge mini diamond tennis bracelet. If you remember, we had Nicole from ring concierge on a few episodes ago. 
She is also a wealth of knowledge. Um, and her diamond tennis bracelet costs $8.98. So it's priced under $1,000. And this diamond tennis bracelet looks good with like virtually any wedding dress um, for any bride. Maybe the bride would even want to wear it for like her bridal shower or for many of the other fucking events that brides have. They have like 50 million events, right? So it's really beautiful. And you can also shop it in 14 karat white gold, 14 karat yellow gold, or 14 karat rose gold. Um, and you can either shop it with the Eternity. So that means diamonds like all around the bracelet or half just on the top of the bracelet. And that would obviously cost a little bit less. That's the $8.98 version. So I think that that's a really nice gift, really nice gift for the holidays. Um, my next one is for the statement jewelry enthusiast under $500 is the Destry Sonia Double Daisy Gold Earrings. These are 320. I'm obsessed with Destry. I think that they make really beautiful jewelry um, for the like eccentric wearer who likes to kind of like mix and match. I'm actually mixing and matching my Jenny Bird earrings today, which we're going to talk about them soon. But like I have two different tones on this ear and just one silver on this ear. And these Sonia Double Daisy earrings have like the bigger flower, the bigger daisy on the top in one ear and then the smaller daisy on the top in the other ear. So it's like a subtle little quirk subtle differences. And if you shop Desk Tree, they have a lot of statement earrings like that. Um, a really nice jewelry retailer to shop for the holidays. I'm starting to feel like my words are slurring. So, so I'm so British. Okay. The next one for the logo lover under a thousand dollars. Why not shop vintage? You guys know I love vintage. We've had vintage episodes this is actually a Gucci watch that my grandma, my grandma passed down to me. I don't know if she knows that she passed it down to me. She, interesting life, that woman, Phyllis. But she did suffer from dementia. And I, I don't know if she remembers that she gave this watch to me, but I love it. Um, it doesn't, it's, it's broken. I have to take it to um, someone to get it fixed. But basically what's so cool is that this Gucci watch has different bezels and they're interchangeable. You can simply just twist them off and you can still find this exact Gucci watch with the interchangeable bezels online. Um, particularly, I found it at Bejeweled Baby. They sell a bunch of vintage watches. So if you don't want Gucci and you want something else, you can, you know, try to find a really nice Cartier watch, um, a vintage Cartier watch. And I think that that's really cool. A tank watch. Um, and Bejeweled Baby actually has this one in stock with a bunch of different bezels, even more bezels than I own. Um, and this is on sale for $800. So you can definitely shop Bejeweled Baby. It may not even be in stock by the time this episode airs because you know vintage, but Bejeweled Baby is a great place if you know a watch collector and you want to help them increase their collection for the holidays. Um, definitely check them out for vintage. Um, for an initial lover, so someone who doesn't just like personalization, but specifically initials, um, under $200, I'm recommending this Sarah Chloe Lana Oval Signet Ring. I really like Signet Rings. I do. I don't actually own one. Um, my boyfriend Nick owns a bunch and he wears them. And I have always thought that was like one of the most attract. Like when I first started dating him, I remember being like, I love his Signet Rings. I love his gold like bracelets. I just thought that that was hot. And to this day, like I actually have gotten him. I've gifted him a Signet Ring. Um, and and this signet ring is really simple, really classic, and it has initials in cursive etched on the actual plate. So I think that that's really cool. Um, this costs $138, so really beautiful. It can be worn on any finger, and you can shop it in different color metals. You can shop it in different ring sizes, and you can choose the font, which I think is really cool. So Sarah Chloe is great if you want to really customize your jewelry. They have a lot of different options on the site. For the layering fiend, under $500. I'm recommending Roxanne Asulin. This jeweler is, so she kind of got her start known for like the little chiclet, multicolored um, stretch bracelets. But Roxanne Asulin has become so much more than that. They are a great personalization place to shop. And they also have a whole category where all different like, um, gift sets are listed in their gift guide. So I really, per I personally like, if you know a bracelet lover, like a chunky gold jewelry bracelet lover, um, the editor stack number two is a really beautiful option. It comes with like a chunky chain link 
bracelet. It comes with kind of like a snake double wrap bracelet and it comes with um just another really simple gold, beautiful minimalist bracelet. And you can wear them together. You can wear them separate. You can wear some on one, one arm and some on the other. So I think that that's really cool. And if you know someone who loves to stack necklaces instead, I'm recommending Roxanne Aslin, the swanky necklace set. This um, retails for 90 to 460, depending on what you include in your stack. You don't need to include all of them, but it's got a really, there's, there's one tennis choker that you can add onto the stack. There's one like multi snake gold chain. And there's one that even has like a really cool toggle with some red accents. So I think that's a really beautiful option. For the ear decorator under a thousand, if you didn't know about Maria Tosh. Maria Tosh is a celebrity loved jewelry brand. They are expensive. Um, they do have a really high price point, but what, what I think is really cool is that you can kind of like slowly build up your Maria Tosh collection and, oh, doorbell, 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 my sushi's here, yay. Maria Tosh, you can kind of slowly build up your stack. Um, of really beautiful earrings from Maria Tash and create an ear party as you might want to call it. And I really love this handcuff hoop earring with medium chain. If you do have a loved one that has multiple piercings, I think it's really cool. It looks really cool on the ear, whether you're going to like put one, you know, one of the cuffs in your hole down here and then another one up by your cartilage. Um, you can kind of decorate it however you want. And you can also purchase this in yellow gold, rose gold, or white gold, and you can choose which um, millimeter size you want. So that's a really unique gift, I think. And I also think just because of the whole handcuff situation, it's probably better for like someone who's like a little bit edgier in your life. Okay. Um, now for the classicist under 200, I am recommending Jenny Bird's small icon hoops. Now, alternate, these are the Jenny Bird's small icon hoops. I'm wearing them today. I love them. They do come in silver and gold. They retail for 110. Um, you can also shop them in medium. The ones I have are small and they are water durable, which I really appreciate because if I jump in the shower with them on, I don't have to worry about it. Um, and like I said, I just really love Jenny Bird. I think Jenny Bird's a great retailer to shop for jewelry, especially for the holidays. Another celebrity favorite hoop earring retailer, just so you know. So anyone, anyone knows I'm so soberish. Okay. Is Jennifer Fisher. Jennifer Fisher is also very well known for her hoops. Uh, Hailey Bieber is particularly a fan. Same with like Emily Ratajkowski. These one inch thread mini hoops are 140. So again, you have the under 200 price range there. And of course, like they go with everything. So those are, you know, a good option if you prefer those instead of like the thin uh, hoops that I'm wearing today. And then for the Beach Babe under 200, I only have two more. For the Beach Babe under 200, I am recommending LEU's Lola Anklet. I told you that there would be an anklet on this list. This is $200. It comes with pearls, a gold chain, and it comes with shells. So I think that's really cool. I like that you can twist it around. Um, it would look different with whatever beach or vacation outfit the person is wearing. And for someone who like loves the beach, vacation is always, they always are thinking, about going to a place where there's an ocean. So it, it, I know that the holidays is, I know that the holidays is, you know, obviously we think of like winter and we don't necessarily think of wearing shell jewelry, but for the beach lover, they will appreciate it. And I truly believe that. That's why I wanted to have at least one item on this list for the beach babe. And then finally, my very last jewelry recommendation for the pearl enthusiast, because we didn't really talk about an item that is strictly pearls. Um, hey Maeve, Corsica's necklace in cream is $66. So this is an under a hundred price range here. And I really like how it comes on this beautifully twisted uh, rope. And it's kind of like a choker necklace. It's adjustable so you can change the height. And it's got this really unique pearl. It's not just like your classic, standard pearl. I think if someone loves gold jewelry, this is this will really complement gold jewelry as well. So definitely great to think about. Um, oh, and it's on sale. $40 instead of $66 right now. So go get it. Um, those are my recommendations for jewelry gifts. Now we are going to try Dana's favorite meal from Robangi. 
salmon avocado roll. Trish is getting excited because she sees food. And Trish definitely does love salmon and all fish. So, okay. First of all, very important to note is that Dana said that she loves a classic salmon avocado roll with a side of ginger. So I asked Robangi for a side of ginger and they sent the biggest effing side of ginger I have ever seen in my life, plus ginger on the side of the actual sushi roll. I am actually loving that. Um, oh my God, I love ginger too. And I can eat ginger with like anything or by itself. So all right, soy sauce come out. You knew I was gonna make a mess of this. First of all, let's get some ginger just because they sent so much ginger. Let's put some ginger in the, so the soy sauce. And in order to take on, like, gosh, this doesn't look like a nice picture now. Mule cup in this photograph. One day I'm going to be good at this. One day I'm going to be good at being a podcast host and doing all the stuff I have to do. Oh, this could be a good angle. Ooh, yummy. Okay, let's try it. This salmon avocado roll does look very fresh. I'm not going to lie. And I love a classic salmon avocado roll too. Uh, Robangi did give you the option to sub in brown rice, but Dana likes it classic. So I didn't do that. I have like a weird thing where I do sometimes prefer brown rice on some rolls because I feel like it's almost like al dente pasta. Does anyone else feel that? Like when you put brown rice with sushi, it feels like there's a harder exterior almost. So I don't know. I just haven't, like, I'm one of those weird people who is weird. All right. That's a lot of ginger, but we're going to fucking go for it. Oh yeah, that's really good. And the avocado is so fresh. And I know in previous episodes, I've showed you guys that I just eat ginger plain, but yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Wow. Okay, so also in addition to getting your loved one's jewelry for the holidays, take them out for sushi and get them a salmon and avocado roll. Kit, do you wanna come in here and say goodbye to everybody? Come here. She's like, fuck no, that doesn't taste like bread. <laughs> we love you. Um, happy shopping for the holidays. Do jewelry for the holidays. I don't know why I'm just really feeling jewelry this year. I'm really feeling soberish this year. Um, if you know someone who is trying to cut back on alcohol or does not drink alcohol and is interested in trying THC and CBD, soberish it is. Um, and sushi. Sushi, always take them out for sushi. Honestly, get them the jewelry first and then tell them to wear the jewelry out to sushi and they will enjoy that. Okay, love you. Bye. Bubby, I'm, I'm getting sober-ish. I finished the drink, so I don't know. <laughs>